Hi everyone and welcome to the Laser Channel where we learn, create, and share. My name is Greg and in today's video we're going to be doing the follow-up of the X4 Pro from McPow. In the first video I did the unboxing and checked out all the features on the machine. In this video we're going to be checking out the accuracy of the machine by taking a look at the built-in camera system and of course running a couple of fun sample projects. Let's get to it. I started out already by connecting the machine up to the Lightburn software using the auto connect feature. It's very simple and very straightforward. After that, I calibrated the camera lens within the Lightburn software using the Lightburn setup wizard and the included test target that comes with the machine. Once again, it's very straightforward and Lightburn takes me through step by step through that process. And this is a great segue into, again, what I think is one of the best features about this machine is the built-in camera. So with that, we're going to start out in the computer and I'm going to show you the tests that I use to test out the accuracy of the camera system. I'll start out by homing the machine. That's a very important step. Once that's complete, I am going to Go over to camera control and update the overlay and we'll see that I've got my piece of poster board down. And what I'm going to do is draw a box in each of the four corners. I'll control C to copy that and then control V to place another one. And I will make sure that I'm over my work material and I'll do that for each of the four corners. I'm going to add one more and place that roughly in the center, which is going to be basically directly underneath the camera. Now the whole point of this uh, test is typically with a camera system, as we move out towards the edges furthest from the camera, some of our accuracy starts to taper off a little bit. And by placing one directly underneath the camera system, that typically is going to offer the best accuracy. With this complete, I'll navigate over to cuts and layers and see that I'm going to be doing a simple line engraving. And here are my settings. I know that these settings will work to simply engrave the paper to reveal that white core, giving us a nice contrast so that the camera can pick up a great image. This is all set and I'm ready to hit the start button. With that complete, I'll navigate back over to camera control. I'll update the overlay without moving anything inside of the machine. And now we can see once I zoom in that our line is basically over the top of where we uh, drew our reference graphics. So that is spot on. In fact, when we zoom in on the middle here, I don't think we could get any more accurate than this. This, by the way, if I take the pencil tool and I really zoom in and I start to draw a line here, um, we're splitting hairs here, but maybe it's off by that amount. And once I click on that, we're going to see maybe 0.1 millimeters in the center. And it looks like it's going to be the same up in the corners of the machine as well. I'm going to delete that line out and down here at the bottom, part of the laser gantry is covering up uh, what we engraved. So I'm going to go over to the move tab and I'm going to move it several times here just to make sure it's out of the way. And I can update the overlay once again. And I'll zoom in and we'll see that, yeah, the line is inside the engraving. So let me know what you think in the comments. Do you think this is really good? Personally, I think it is. But if your opinion differs, I'd also like to hear that as well. This I think looks awesome though. And I'm ready to go on to the next accuracy test. So we tested the accuracy of the camera. Now I want to test the accuracy of the machine itself. And for this, 
I'm gonna highlight all these little boxes and I'm going to delete those out. The home position of the machine is down here and what I'm going to do is draw a circle in the opposite corner. And I'm going to repeat this. And what this is going to make the machine do is it's gonna to have to travel across the length of the entire work area, engrave the circle, and then go all the way back. I'm gonna repeat that again, making the machine go all the way over and do it again. And I wanna see if those two circles line up on top of one another. I'll rehome the machine once again and update the overlay. I'll zoom in up in this corner here and I'm going to draw a perfect circle. That looks good. Actually, we'll make it a perfect 25 millimeters. I like the way that that looks. I'll hit the start button. Let's check out this next accuracy test. I can also check this out by just taking a look at the overlay. I'll update that and zoom in. That looks good. And I'm gonna run this again. I'll update the overlay once again. And I'll see that it didn't change at all. It engraved exactly over the previous circle. In fact, I'm gonna grab the GoPro camera inside of the machine and we'll take an up close look. That is the machine accuracy test with two passes. Now I can run this part of the test, make as many passes as I would like. And the reason why I run this test is it simulates if I was doing a cutout for a project and I didn't cut all the way through, I wanna go back and add more passes, but I wanna make sure that the machine is going to cut exactly over the previous line cut. And this test confirms that this X4 Pro from McPow will do exactly that. With the accuracy test complete, I'm ready to move on to the first of two fun mini projects. This first project, I'm gonna utilize the flexibility of the camera so that I can reuse a piece of scrap material from a previous project. Having a camera system on a laser machine is a great way to maximize my material. And this material has been already pre-painted from that previous project. This material, by the way, is going to be eighth inch thick press board. Now don't let that eighth inch fool you. If you've used laser machines, you know that this hard press board can be very difficult to cut through, but the 22 watt laser on this X4 Pro will get through it quite easily with just a couple of passes. Now in just a minute, when I place my work material inside of the machine, I find for my best practices, I'm going to place the work material somewhere in between the camera system and the exhaust of the machine. This way I get the best of both worlds. I get the great accuracy of having the work material placed very near to the camera, but I also get the safety of evacuating all the smoke produced by engraving and cutting this project because it's a bit closer to the exhaust fan. I'll get this placed inside of the machine now. We'll see when I put the work material inside of the machine, I really didn't make sure that it was squared up against the laser machine like I typically would if I was running without a camera system. And that's because with the camera, I know exactly where the work material is. Back inside the computer, I'll click on camera control, I'll update the overlay, and there's my piece of work material. We'll see off to the side here, I have a happy little tortoise. I'll be doing the engraving in black and then the cutout in blue. So I can grab my turtle, place them up here. In fact, I can utilize all of the work material and make this turtle a little bit bigger. Here we'll see that part of uh, one of his hands will be cut off a little bit. So I can rotate him around and I can maneuver this around until I get it just right. I think this looks pretty good. When I navigate back over to cuts and layers, we're going to see the fill layer. 
I'm going to be running at 175 millimeters per second at a power level of 85%. And the cut layer is going to be eight millimeters per second at a power level of 90%. In fact, when I double click on the fill layer, we'll see that the line interval is going to be 300 lines per inch. And I'm going to fill all shapes at once. This looks good and I'll hit okay. Well, from here, all I need to do is hit the start button. A little while later and this first project is all done. Let's check it out. Straight out of the machine, here's our happy little tortoise. I'm going to get this cleaned up with some LA's totally awesome. With that quick cleaning, this first project looks absolutely fantastic. The first project turned out great, and now it's time to move on to the second and final project in today's video. For the project material, I've selected this plywood. This plywood is really thick, coming in at 3 eighths of an inch thick, and it's gonna really test the cutting ability of the 22 watt laser module in the X4 Pro. I've placed the work material inside of the machine and I set the laser focus using the convenient focusing lever on the side of the laser module. When we draw our attention back inside Lightburn software, I have the next graphic loaded in, which is going to be this nice engraving of a coffee cup because this of course is going to be a coffee coaster. Around the outside in blue is going to be our cut layer. Now I've made a ton of these coasters. However, the usual material that I use is going to be quarter inch uh, Baltic birch plywood. It cuts very easily, but once again, I'm using this super thick 3 8 industrial plywood because I really want to test the strength of the laser on this X4 Pro. When we dig into the settings that I'm using, we're going to see that Again, I'm going to be using 150 millimeters per second at a power of 75% lines per inch at 240. Constant power mode is turned on. And I'm going to fill all shapes at once because there's a lot of little shapes on this laser. When I move over to the line layer, I have a speed of six millimeters per second at a power level of 90% and the reality of the material being 3 eighths of an inch thick is I'm going to be using eight cut layers for this. So the next thing I need to do is to get the graphic over the material, I'll navigate over to camera control and update the overlay. And here we are. I think it would make sense if I homed the machine to get that uh, part of the machine out of the way. And I'll update the overlay once again. And here, what I see is part of the wood grain is running downhill a little bit. And because I want to make sure that this kind of lines up with it, I'm going to match the tilt of my project a little bit so that it looks like I properly lined everything up. And we can also see that there's a change in the color of the wood grain so I can also now move my project around and go, I think that the color change should start at the bottom of the actual cup. So hopefully you're able to see that on your screen. So once again, this is a great use of the camera system on the machine. This all looks good and I'll Tune in some background music and we'll watch a couple segments of this coffee coaster being made.
The second project is all complete. Let's check it out. So we're gonna see that the coaster didn't just drop out of the work material. And I also see that there's a color band through the engraving through here. And that's not because of the machine. If I move this around a little bit, we're going to see that there's a discoloration in the wood that I did not see. And uh, I definitely wouldn't recommend using this material, especially with it being so thick. But with a little bit of a wiggle here, I think I can pop this out and it looks like there is two attachment points, one at the top and one at the bottom. And that happened to line up with this band line going through the material. Well, here we have it. I was able to cut through the material. I don't think I'd recommend using quite this thick of material and definitely use a higher quality material. As you can see, I've got a little bit of char in my hand, so as you've probably guessed it, I am going to be using some LA's Totally Awesome, once I flip the label around, to clean this up, and we'll check out what this looks like in just a second, once it's had a quick wash. This is still a little wet after that quick wash, but that LA's Totally Awesome did a great job cleaning up all of the engraving char across the uh, surface. Now the outside edges, because there's so many passes, I do have a bit of char left. So I don't know if I ran at a little bit lower power level with more passes, if that would have helped. But once again, this isn't the best material to use. What I really wanted to illustrate was the cutting ability of the machine through this thick material. And I think I accomplished that. I had a lot of fun creating today's content for you. I want to take a different approach in this video by showing you some of the accuracy tests that I run on a machine before I record. And I thought this video, I'll share some of those secrets with you by testing out the accuracy of the machine and the camera system, and then wrapping it up by putting that accuracy to the test by creating two fun projects. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel, or ring that notification bell. It's a great way to help the Laser Channel grow, and it's an awesome way to connect video content like this with other great viewers just like you. Well, until we meet again in the next video, learn, create, and share.